Hello, I'm David Zibbett, and this is a little sketch talk on the team performance model and how it came to be illustrated that the way it is in the well-known bouncing ball format. Uh, the story begins back in the 1980s when I was operating uh, on the East Coast and op uh, offering a workshop in graphic facilitation. And I'd been working for quite a while facilitating many kinds of groups using visuals to help them do organizational development and teamwork and planning. And a consultant uh, named Alan Drexler came to this workshop and he was a very experienced team development person who had been thinking about teamwork for a long time uh, along with a couple of other people, uh, a Jack Gibb and uh, a Marvin Weisbord. And Jack Gibb had done quite a bit of research about teams actual formal research and Marvin Weisbord was a senior OD consultant and the three of them had come to the conclusion that when people are entering into a group process there's a very predictable progression of concerns that they have that they illustrated as a series of questions that are asked pretty much in order although there's some back and forth and that if you understand this progression, you can then understand how people come to work together and uh, start pulling together as a team. So the first question, uh, when Alan was talking about it, he said the, the first concern that people have is, you know, why they're part of a group. And this is the question about purpose and intention and that sort of a thing. And if they answer it, uh, they then move their attention to the second question. The second question is, who are they going to work with, and what's it going to be like, and what are the implications of getting involved? You know, is it a positive or negative experience? Now, the research showed that if people don't get an answer to the why question, they just leave the process. That if people don't get an answer to the who question in their own mind, uh, don't feel good about who they're working with, they go back and begin to wonder, you know, why they're there. But if they do get an answer to both these, they progress to the next uh, logical thing, which is trying to figure out what the group is doing. And this is the point where a group is exploring around and identifying goals, learning all of its background material, getting clear on assumptions and constraints and all that kind of thing. Uh, if answers to that are clear, they then can move to the next logical step, which is how are they going to work together. And this is around agreeing on time, money, materials, and that sort of a thing. And of course, if that is unclear, they go back to what they're doing. If they can't get an answer to that, it's who they're working with, and so forth. Now, I really, I've been working with a, th a theory of process for quite a number of years, which was drawn from natural sciences and um, how process works in many different fields, and have been applying it to meeting processes and group processes. And I had a little bit of a difficulty with not the, the theory, because that made a lot of sense, but with the way it was illustrated graphically. And I also thought it was only half the, half the story. So I began having a dialogue with Alan that ended up being one of the richest co-creative dialogues I've had around tool development. And I said that, you know, while I underlying this metaphor here is the old idea of that people are like construction blocks and that this is really a team building process. In fact, this term is very, very common. And probably we don't even think about that being a metaphor anymore. But team building assumes that it starts on with nothing and builds up and that somehow after a group goes through a process, they then get together and everything works. But I had, uh, I did not think that that really adequately captured how groups worked. Um, I'd been working for a long time uh, reversing the metaphor and feeling like uh, the kinds of models that people use to think about things ought to map onto the deeply embedded somatic and bodily metaphors that guide our everyday activity. So if you think of a, a human being as being vertical most of the day, um, in that orientation, uh, a person thinks of the ground as being down and pretty solid, and the sky is up and pretty amorphous. 
and and open and free and with this orientation uh, I'd gotten in the habit of, of thinking of process as being basically a journey between the freedom of our imagination and our top line aspirations and the constraint of uh, the bottom line and all of these grounded things and I immediately saw of course that if you took uh, Alan's model and just turned it upside down that you would get a very nice mapping onto process theory which is of course that uh, the why question is largely imaginary and up in the air the who question gets a little closer to the ground the what question is much more concrete in fact uh, really is concretized a lot by writing things down on flip charts and getting it clear that way and the how question is definitely about concrete reality uh, staff money time materials all that kind of thing uh, Alan was fascinated with this contention and got even more interested as we began to look at why maybe this was only half the story and I said you know what really happens in process is after this journey down a constraint uh, we go right back up again trying to regain the freedom that we lost and if you think about it this is really the implementation stage is the who what when where where you're taking and figuring out the sequencing of those first four questions and high performance is really a wow state and then you get back around to uh, back up to the top line of uh, why should you continue we went on for about two years having a lot of back and forth about this and starting to craft the team the the Drexler Slibbit team performance model and in doing so we realized that the underlying research that Jack and Marvin and, and Alan had done still applied that this journey down to being clear about how you work together is a back and forth trial and error kind of a journey and it moreover it's a passing between different modes of, of activity so we began working with the graphics to actually show that and to show that the why question um, really happens in the imagination it's illustrated with a, a kind of a, a light burst as is the why question here at the end which is largely in the imagination and we also chose some key words that would name the stage and ended up calling this first one the orientation stage and the second one the trust building stage and this next one the clarification stage and the last one the commitment stage knowing that these words would call out the right kind of conversation that people need to have as they're going through a process uh, the other stages we ended up calling the implementation stage and the high performance and the renewal stage now to really be clear then we we snuck in uh, graphics that would show this this movement from freedom to constraint and tried to indicate the trust building stage is kind of a a flow kind of a thing because in in many ways this whole uh, process of getting to know other people is like moving from the fire of your imagination into kind of the water and the flow of uh, the energy of the group and how it feels this is very much of a feeling thing where this is much more of a intuitive uh, inner kind of examination and the what questions and the how questions are very much about the mind and ought to be represented uh, more concretely so we actually made this iconographic target and we didn't in include the idea of these four levels very explicitly but they are in our thinking behind it and illustrated the final stage as an actual uh, solid object 
that actually cast a shadow and could actually conceivably bounce on the ground. This then was indicated as a series. This then was indicated as a bubble that could burst. And this is back to the starburst. So that's the origins of the team performance model. It's really shifting from a building metaphor to a performance metaphor. And it's also mapping the idea onto the internally uh, embedded way in which humans think about their relationship to the earth and process.